Good morning everybody, Falcon from Craftsman Tiny Homes here. Today we're going to be going over the pros and cons of living in a tiny house. Should you get one or should you not? Let's find out. Tiny house living, you gotta get used to it, you know. You gotta downsize, you gotta think about all that. Do you have a big family? You know, you gotta see if it's even for you. Now a lot of lower income people, you know, they can't, they can't buy these full size properties. They can't afford that. So they look for smaller solutions like tiny homes. First things first with tiny houses, not enough money, okay? You don't have capital and you can't find loans to get your own tiny house. So there's some banks that do loan for tiny houses, you know, but you can always get a personal loan. Now, depending on your credit, you could get a personal loan, but you know, not everybody has good credit. Most of our tiny home customers who are young, they get financial help either from their parents or they have good credit and they get a loan. Most of the older folks, you know, they just been saving up or they sell they sell a house, you know, they want to move, they want to downsize, they don't want to clean, then they move into a tiny house. Now the second main issue is people don't have a place to put it because you know you just forked over, let's say the average tiny house costs around forty thousand dollars. You forked over forty thousand that you've been saving up for a while. Now you can't buy land, which is land is going about ten ten thousand dollars an acre, depending on where you go, you know. And it's it could be it could be pricey, so People do not have places to put their tiny homes. Now there are now there are RV parks that allow for tiny homes all over. You know, you could pay 400, 600 a month. You get all your utilities paid. They even have bathrooms and washing machines there sometimes. So those are really good alternatives. About half of our customers, like I said, they get help from their parents. They either just put it on some land that their parents have or they put it in the back of the house. So I know for 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 people who don't have financial aid like that, I know it can be tough to find their own land like that. On our website, we have a list of places that accept tiny homes, so you could put them on there. It's uh, nationwide as well. Now, the third main concern is not enough space. Not enough space. What I mean by that is, it's a tiny house. You know, you gotta you gotta get used to it. Most tiny houses are under 400 square feet, usually over 100, but definitely under 400, and that that can be very uh, you know, that's a big change, you know, especially coming from normal houses. Even apartments are bigger than that. So yeah, there's not enough space usually. So that's why we, we try to maximize the amount of space that we put in our tiny homes. That's so, you know, we give you all the, we give you all the storage options. You know, you could put a little cupboard, a little storage shed on the front of the trailer hitch. You could have, we, we go up to 13, six from the wheels, eight foot six wide. Again, we're maximizing space here. We put cabinets, put shelves, secret compartments, we do the whole nine yards there and that's just to maximize space like i said if you do decide to go in a tiny house you're going to have to cut about half your stuff you know half of it is going to need to go or you could just opt to get a storage shed which most people do which is probably the most sane option because you know you don't want to part with your belongings your memorabilia and another one i just thought of right now that's not on my list is build quality now tiny homes you know they're usually built on wheels they're built by small business owners, you know, people who left the construction trade. And you're probably, a lot of people are concerned that they are not built correctly or they are, they're, they may not built, be built enough, you know. We standardize our builds to tiny house appendix Q. It's not enough for you. We also make videos of the whole process of us building. We upload it to our TikTok, our YouTube, so anybody can watch us build. Anybody can see it. And even if that is not enough, you know, they got third party inspections that we can do. So third party inspection would be NOAA. It would be um, RVIA because we certify some of our builds as, we certify some of our builds as RVs. So you can also use RVIA and a big one is NOAA. Now these, now these will add on to the cost because you know, you have to pay to get your build inspected along the way. And that just ensures that it's built and that when you're sleeping in there, you know, it's gonna be safe. It's not gonna catch on fire. Nothing's gonna go wrong. And now, since it is such a new thing, you know, people wonder, can I get it insured? Well, since we, we make them as custom RVs when people want insurance or when they want to go to an RV park, yes, you can get insurance on it. Even Geico offers tiny home insurance. We have links to all the insurance for tiny homes and places to put them on our website, by the way. It's Crafts and Tiny Homes. And last but not least, probably the biggest one, your family will think you're crazy. Okay, tiny homes are new, you know? I mean, back then people had really, really tiny homes, but you know, there was no codes, and you had like 15 people in one little tiny house. I'm talking about like the 1800s, by the way. But then we got modernized, you know, we have bigger homes. We're, all, we're used to this lifestyle, and we do not want to change for the life of us. 
but at the same time prices keep going up inflation is crazy you know we need to do something to survive so we got to downsize not all of us do but most of us do you know all right so now we're going to look at the perks of owning a tiny home first of all my favorite very easy to clean very easy to keep you know everything is everything is about 20 paces away or just three steps up you know it's very easy to clean you can clean dust off of anything everything stays in the cupboards very easy very nice for someone who hates cleaning even though my room's really clean people who hate cleaning get a tiny house you let your laundry and you let all your chores all your cleaning duties they pile up so much in your house and you got to do it once and maybe it takes a whole weekend you know to clean the whole house in a tiny house if you let it pile up you only get to take two hours and you clean the whole house whole thing clean spotless now we're going to talk about pricing are they affordable now they are affordable yes but if you compare square footage prices from a big house to a small house you'll be like hold on a second the price per square foot is a little off and that's because all the expensive items are included in the tiny house the same ones that are included in the big house the only difference is walls space and fo square footage but what do i mean by that okay so you let's say you have a two thousand dollar range and that that price gets divided between two thousand square feet right that's one dollar per square foot now you have that same two thousand dollar range in a 200 foot square 200 square foot house you see the difference it's gonna jack up your price and now there's a lot of things in there that will do that your mini split your water heater your appliances even your custom woodwork your paint your siding everything will do that to you so affordability yes the average tiny house is around 40 to fifty thousand dollars and now we make tiny homes that are down to twenty five thousand dollars for a nice little 20 foot by eight cozy little tiny home comes with uh you know comes painted comes with all the water heater the ac mini split so i know i always try to sell that's just because i'm a, i'm a salesman you know but today i'm not a salesman i'm here to give you information for free i'm giving you information about tiny homes insights into the business what i hear from all the customers questions and concerns from all the people who approach me about tiny homes i'm delivering it to you in one video here we go so to sum it up yes tiny homes are very affordable compared to normal homes you could be paying 150 200 300 thousand i don't even think you're gonna find a house for 150 that is in decent shape with some decent land okay resale value is it an asset or is it a liability now most homes are assets you know it is a tangible asset let's say you come across some property you know you're getting sick of the tiny house life you need to sell your tiny home it will retain value way 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 better than the rv would and all around less cost to live so your energy bill your tax your insurance everything is going to be way lower like i said there's not much to clean in there even your cleaning supplies are going to be way lower your monthly energy bill in a tiny house is 30 to 50 dollars that is insane okay i think our house monthly we have five people living in there our monthly bill is 500 dollars that's just because we're running power tools you know we're building tiny houses all day long now we're going to talk about taxes if your tiny home if your tiny home is on wheels you get avoid a lot of taxes because that is an RV that is not a house you know you could park that thing on any plot of land that allows you to and you do not have to pay property tax you don't have you don't have to pay for permits for that tiny house because it is not a permanent structure it is movable Hurricane Helena just came here if it was right in your path you know you could just say I'm moving my tiny home just drive it to your families all right next thing we're gonna be talking about is the coolness factor now this is similar to the other side of it with the family who think you're crazy this is the complete opposite of that you're gonna have people who think you're crazy living in a tiny house they can never do it then you're gonna have other people who are like this is so cool like you're gonna go in there and it's like a little fort you know how when you're a kid you make a fort and that shit oh part of my language nothing is just so cool well when you're, you're gonna be in your own little fort that's your own little habitat right there so the coolness factor is real plus you can easily customize every aspect of luxury without the luxury cost what this means is if you wanted to spice it up you know you have a higher taste you know you can afford the extra oomph to make it yours truly your home right you could do that and it would be a lot cheaper than trying to 
remodel an entire house, let's say, or build a whole new house from scratch because you're building a tiny house and every step of it along the way, you can customize everything. Literally, on our website, there's a form. You can pick every aspect of your house, how you want it, what model, you know. So tiny house, but not tiny appliances. Now there are tiny appliances you can have with your house, but they we usually don't put tiny appliances in our house. Full size ovens, full size microwaves, full size refrigerators, washer and dryers, you name it. Now, even if you aren't for the environment, if you buy a tiny house, it is better for the environment because you have a smaller footprint. You know, you're not taking up all this electricity. You're not doing all that. So it is a, definitely a greener solution and it is built by us. We are a small business, Craftsman Tiny Homes. We are out here building away one by one. You know, we don't have a big factory. We don't have like a Ford assembly line and we build each one one by one. If you guys enjoyed this video and like to learn more about tiny homes, give us a follow, subscribe, share it to your friends. That really helps. You know, we're a small business. We're growing though. And uh, with that, all right, see you guys later.